Bendigo is quite different to what else was happening around Australia at that time. There's interaction, participation and also camaraderie and a partnership happening between the Chinese and the Europeans. You see photographs of these bannermen and generals and you're looking at the faces and there's Chinese, Chinese and what looks maybe half Chinese and then you see completely European men carrying these banners and um, it shows that there was not just admiration for the, the costumes on a, is it in regards to a spectacle but there's also the support and the assistance of the Europeans here in Bendigo to make sure that regalia got out and was paraded every Easter. So it's quite unlike um, what the government's telling them in regards to the anti-Chinese legislation. And then in 1901, when you start to see the um, White Australia policy, and yet we see more Europeans probably helping then than ever before. And it seems to be something that's really united the town. Um, it's really united the people. For instance, one of my uncles had gone to China and married a Chinese and American lady and he wanted to bring the two children to Bendigo for their education. He was born and raised here. He was an Australian citizen and uh, the Australian government of the day said no and it was wonderful. You had the Bendigo Advertiser writing articles in support of my uncle Kim Lan O'Hoy and the headings was this policy of discrimination is unfair and unjust. So you had the media in Bendigo advocating that the Ohio family were respected and they should be able to bring their children out here for an education. And this is in 1913. The whole idea of the procession really was to raise money, but there was the benefit that the people realised the Chinese community was contributing to the culture and to the charities of Bendigo. I wouldn't say the Chinese deliberately did it as a political, but it grew that way that people appreciated it.